So um, if you are wondering why you didn't get to see Andy get dropped off in this ZJ in this video, that's because we had a little bit of an issue and I'm going to follow that up in my next video. So stay tuned for that as I correct uh, a problem with the General Grievous. <laughs> I'm dropping him off in the Commander after our ZJ road trip. Why? We had ZJ issues. I'll see you tomorrow if you need help. <laughs> I might. Okay. Have a I'll good night, buddy. Up early I'm going to need her help bleeding some brakes. No problem. What time you just call me in the morning or text me to let me know when you're starting. You got it, man. Okay. Will do. Good night. Ah, cheat my life! Cheat my life. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are here once again with General Grievous and some brakes. Yeah, only this time we're gonna do the calipers. Brand new calipers. Well, remanufactured calipers. Because these, they seized. Hey Jay, this is Andy. I'm looking for, um, two rear calipers for my 98 Jeep Cherokee, yeah. Grand Cherokee. Because we are it's a six on cylinder. the side of the road. I can give you the part numbers too. Uh, what's the part numbers? C426 and C427. All right guys, so here we are. It is the day after our road trip that Andy and I took to get some Jeep parts and a ZJ. Everything was working fine. Everything was working great with my new brakes, but unfortunately, I did not change the calipers, and I'll explain that a little bit more when I get into the calipers, but what happened was, after I guess about 400 miles, we were returning home, going through Brooklyn, and rush hour traffic, I had to hit the brakes real hard, and the pistons in the calipers did not release. My brakes just seized up right down and there, so I had to pull over. The brakes got extremely hot, by the time I could find a safe spot to stop. And uh, yeah, I just let them cool down, tried to drive a little bit more, they seized again, and they finally loosened up after a good amount of time of waiting. We were able to drive home nice and safe, but I don't trust these calipers. I should have changed them to begin with, and uh, that's, a, that's a lesson learned right there, lesson learned the hard way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into these parts. I did not get these online. These are not the power stop brakes. These aren't parts that I ordered from rockauto.com. What I did was just walked into AutoZone and I grabbed myself some door last parts right there. A couple extra cans of brake parts cleaner because you can never have enough of this stuff. And we're just gonna swap these on straight up. Alright, so here we go. We got the wheels off. Now we're gonna take off the calipers. Should be nice and easy. We just serviced these, well, sort of. We did the pads and rotors, and we neglected to change the calipers. And again, I will get to that in a minute. Why I was so neglectful. Bad, bad Dan. But here we go, just a 13 millimeter. And I find it really easier to use these Ratcheting little wrenches. These are fantastic. Highly recommend these. These are, what are these? These are Husky. These are Home Depot ones. So, yeah, I'm not, not a paid Husky sponsor, but it works. So here we go. Slide these little caliper pins out. Then you go ahead and wiggle off this caliper. Just rock it on out. Now we can take a look at the damage. All right, gotta pop off these pads. These poor pads were destined for failure. And uh, it's not their fault. These are actually really good pads. And I toasted them. Oh my goodness. Look at these. These are charred. Yikes. Ugh. Charred and cracked. 
Oh, my mistake. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That discoloring on the edges, and that's about an eighth of an inch inside. That is from just excessive heat. <laughs> that's what you get after a race abuse or uh, idiots neglecting to change their calipers. Oh, my goodness. Let's look at these rotors here. Uh, all right, we got some wear inside. That's from my emergency braking. I'm glad that worked. <laughs> now let's go look at the caliper. Check this out, guys. I have no one to blame but myself, and uh, here's why I was tricked, or <laughs> I tricked myself. Check out these uh, these sliders. How easy these pins slide. They were so free. It it, it fooled me. Uh, well, at least I wanted to believe that the um, the piston inside the caliper would move just as free. But if you take a look at footage from the video that I filmed doing this the first time, and here are the brake pads on this caliper, and there, again, is nothing there. Wow. Terrible. So, yeah, because these old pads were so worn away, down to nothing, basically, this caliper... This piston was all the way ejected, and um, although it did compress nice and smooth when I put the C-clamp on it, it went back in, but God knows what kind of sin and degradation was all crusted up inside, because uh, when I got to a certain point the other day, driving through Brooklyn, the piston just completely seized when it pushed up against the rotor, the brake pad was binding up, and... Uh, yeah, well, it doesn't take, doesn't take much to notice how bad this was. Completely burnt out, smoking, and uh, was definitely stuck on the side of the road for a couple hours. Not fun, not fun. Uh, this all could have been prevented if I had just replaced these calipers to begin with, but hey man, sometimes you gotta learn the hard way. So, let's take a look at the new calipers. And again, I walked right into AutoZone. They, uh, they're not paying me for this video. <laughs> I just grabbed these because they looked like a good deal. These are pre-coated with rust-proof paint, uh, so they say. Uh, they are refurbished, so you can see the old, uh, old rust marks, but uh, I guess they were rebuilt professionally. I'm not sure who did that job, but you can see here the new phenolic piston has been inserted with a new... Uh, seal and this looks very good. We got new boots, new sliders. These are nice. They are pre-lubed. Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit more brake grease on them because we're in the Northeast and that's always a problem with the rust up here. And uh, we got a new banjo bolt. We got new copper crush washers. We got a new bleeder valve and we got a bleeder valve cover. So this is a nice little setup. I think uh, it was only about $45.00. I brought in another pair I had, so um, I got the core charge refund right away. So far, I'm pretty happy with these, so let's get them in. All right, gonna take this caliper out, and to do that, all we're gonna do is remove this, I think it's 14 or 15 millimeter banjo bolt, and we're gonna take the caliper off of this soft line. So here we go. I got a 14 millimeter on here. It seems to fit nice. There we go. Banjo bolt is out. All right, so here we go. We got banjo bolt, and we have a copper crush washer, and then we have the soft line end. Don't forget, put something down, catch uh, any dripping. <laughs> brake fluid splatters uh, that's down there and here we go the soft line end came off nice and easy all right here's my old flower pot bottom catching all my drippings I got my banjo bolt down here copper crush washer inside we got the other copper crush washer right here press up against the caliper now let me show you guys here we go pop this out now here's a good look at the banjo bolt. Now this is pretty important. Take a look at the crush washer. We got a ribbed side over here, and we got a smooth side over here. 
Now, a lot of people say, which is the side that goes against the caliper? Many will argue it's the rib side. Many will argue it's the smooth side. Well, the correct answer is neither because you are supposed to use fresh crush washers every time you put on a new banjo bolt. Check this out, guys. Look at this new banjo bolt. And look at this. The crush washers are brand new, completely smooth all around. You want to use new crush washers and this will prevent any leaks. All right, got my soft line wedged in between my springs and um, it's leaking a little bit because, well, all the gravity is pushing down through the system and uh, brake fluid is just gonna be oozing out the top. So I'm gonna try to get my caliper hooked up sooner than later. Um, here we go, now is a good time to get a look at the soft line. You're gonna wanna inspect it, make sure there are no cracks in it at all. This looks to be good, and if you're gonna change it, might as well do it now while you already got the system open. And uh, I'm just gonna clean this up, and then I'll put on the new caliper. All right, just gonna wipe everything down. Don't want any gunk on here whatsoever. Wanna keep it smooth. Hit it with some brake parts cleaner. And here we go, here comes the new caliper. Take off the banjo bolt once again. Slide it through. Put on my second crush washer. We'll put the caliper in just as we took it off. All right, got my banjo bolt on. How do I know it won't leak? Well, it's very important to torque it right because you want to get the copper to crush just as it should and to ensure you have the right torque on this well, I'm gonna use a torque wrench not to get all nerded out but um, I think the proper torque specs for crush washers and banjo bolts is 12 to 14 foot-pounds I'm gonna use my inch pound torque wrench so 12 times 12 is 144 so I'll be using 144 inch pounds and uh, that's how I know I will crush the crush washers to the proper torque. There we go. There we go. It's important not to over torque these, otherwise they will just leak and leak and leak. And there we go. That should be a properly torqued banjo bolt. Just gonna clean up because of course the brake fluid is corrosive. Don't want anything to rust or rot as bad <laughs> as it already is rotting. Uh, nice to have a new caliper. But yeah, that is great. Fantastic. All right, we'll go ahead and install the pads and the rotor again. All right, spray down the new rotor. Get the inside clean for the emergency brake pads. Once again, <laughs> deja vu, guys. Deja vu. What is it? A deja vu is usually a glitch in the matrix. It happens when they change something. Outside room, brake pads. <laughs> As you can see, I got plenty of anti C's. Still good to go. And to compare the door last brakes versus the power stop brakes, well, <laughs> forget the charring and cracking, but you can see the power stop brakes are tapered, the door last brakes are straight, they both have grooves in the center, and uh, yeah, well, we'll see how these do. I'll pop these in. Brake grease. A little bit of brake grease on the new caliper pins. We'll go ahead and slide them in. 
actually gonna slide the bottom brake out a little bit, get around the shock, and we'll hand thread these. These are the uh, 10 millimeter bolts. They got the big flange on, but we'll go ahead and swap the 13 millimeter for the 10 millimeter. There we go. Looking pretty good. All right, gonna do the other side and then we'll bleed the brakes. Alright, bleed the brakes time. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this little rubber cap, set this to the side, and that's going to reveal our 3 8 brake bleeder. And I'm just going to crack this open. I'm going to do this for both sides. Crack it open a little bit, and we'll let gravity take over just for a little bit. And that's going to just feed this little, uh, little caliper full of brake fluid, and then uh, the excess is going to start dripping out. So I'm going to go crack that open right now on the other side. Well, I'll be tickled. It's a 10 millimeter. So now we're juggling between standard and metric. Fantastic. Mismatching set. Thanks AutoZone. All right. Well, that's dripping. We're gonna go ahead and pop the hood. Hey, look, my old brake rotors were chucks. <laughs> Open this up. Let gravity do its thing for a minute while I go find my new brake fluid. All right, so here's my brake fluid. This is stuff I opened just the other day, maybe it was about five days ago, when I did my brake top off. And uh, yeah, freshly opened. I know this is good. And um, let's see, this one, this should be brand spanking new. Yep, brand new seal. So this is what I'll use. I'm gonna try to get a good bleed going here. And of course, you're gonna always wanna use new brake fluid because brake fluid is hygroscopic. It attracts water and water in your brake system is bad. That's what I'm looking for, just a little steady drip. Just so I know that the fluid was seeping in to the caliper. It's working its way out of the bleeder valve. So uh, now I can go ahead, close this off. We'll start the bleeding process. We just did this to let gravity do the job for us while we cleaned up a little bit. This was, this was the 3 8 Dang it, got me all confused now. I'm gonna have to switch these out one day. Not today, AutoZone, not today. All right, so tighten this back up. I'll go tighten the other side, and then we'll, you know what, we'll just start bleeding the other side. All right, when you bleed the brakes, you wanna make sure that your reservoir is topped off with some fresh fluid. There we go, that's plenty. Now we're gonna cap this up, and then we're gonna bleed Everything that's the farthest from this whole setup, the master cylinder first. So that's gonna be the passenger side rear, then we're gonna go to the driver side rear, then we're gonna go to the passenger front, and then we're gonna go to the brakes right underneath this, which of course would be the driver side front. So that's the pattern to bleed the brakes. All I need now is a lovely assistant. So, hey babe, brake bleeding time. All right, guys, here is our simple brake bleeding setup. This is tried and true. People have been doing this since the Middle Ages, so you know it works. Just got a simple jug here. This is a wiper fluid, doesn't matter what it is. I got a little water at the bottom to give it some weight and I drilled a hole in it and I put my tube in it. It's a 3 8 outer diameter and a quarter inch inner diameter. And uh, nothing special going on here. Just a little zip tie to keep the tube from pulling out. And go ahead and secure this lid on. Now what we're gonna do is take our 10 millimeter, well, this one's 10 millimeter at least. Other side is 3 8 <laughs> What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure this is on nice and tight. There we go. So we're gonna slide this on. 
right there. We're gonna give us some room to loosen it just in a minute. We're gonna pop on our tube right onto the bleeder. And we're gonna hold this firm right in here. Then we're gonna have our lovely assistant depress the brake pedal all the way and squeeze. We're gonna open this, let all the bubbly brake fluid out into this container. Then we're gonna go ahead and put this back on tight and she's gonna let go of the pedal. And then we're gonna do this a couple times. Um, 10 to 15 times, heck, why not? As long as all the bubbles come out, you do what it takes. And that's it, that's simple. So here we go. All right, babe, hit it. Let go. All right, give me one long, hard press and hold. All right. All right, that was the passenger side rear, nice and bled. Did that about 10 times. Got all the bubbles out and some old brake fluid out. We'll pop on our cap. Oh, and yeah, this is how you know the calipers are on the right side. The bleeder is on the top nib. See two nibs? Make sure the bleeder is on the upper part of this little piston area. And here is our reservoir. We use quite a bit of fluid, so we're gonna go top this off before we start the driver's side rear. And here we go. Keep going with this bottle until it's all gone. There we go. Your brakes are bled. Thank you, lovely assistant. Thank you so much, <laughs> oh, it's Andy. <laughs> We're here. Let's do it. Do the fronts. Make sure all the air is out. And we'll top this off again. Here's one thing I always forget to do. The FSM calls for it. And I always overlook it. A little bit of brake grease right over here on these tabs. We'll get this thing sliding nice and free. Just a little bit, not too much. The top and the bottom. Alright guys, here's something I do that I don't usually tell you guys. It's usually an off-camera thing. I'm always testing my lug nuts, making sure they are torqued too. 100 foot pounds, like a nerd, just gotta be safe. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, usually a good and tight works fine when you're doing a, uh, you know, the lug wrench, manual lug wrench, but you never know if you're using an impact gun and your battery's dying, you're gonna wanna make sure it's done nice and even and safely. There we go. All right, gonna do the passenger front now. Got the wheel turned all the way driver for access. I'm gonna get up in there. You can't really see it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna get in there, put my 3 8 and my jug. I'm gonna go ahead and bleed this in the same way I did the rear. Squeezer. Okay. Nice. Oh. Do it. Okay. Oh. Do it. Alright, I think that's good. Alright, start her up. Turn the wheel. Open. All the way down. Closed. Up. Alright, last one. Open, squeeze it hard. Yeah. Closed. Closed. Nice teamwork. 
I can see the fluid go from yellow to clear. That's good. Yep. Get the bed out. You done? Done. Look at all this nasty stuff. This is supposed to be kind of clear, <laughs> and it's definitely not clear in this jug. So, yeah, we're getting this out of here. And we use this whole, what is this? Uh, we use this whole 12 fluid ounces. So that's in the system. Nice, fresh, good stuff. And we just open this. So we're going to top this off gently. Don't spill it. We're not going to overfill it. Not like I did last time. <laughs> right, guys? You guys are the best subscribers. You always call me out when I screw up. And I love it. Makes me better. So we're adding fluid to the fill line. And that should do it. All right. All right. One quick wipe down. Make sure we got all the spills. Don't want to corrode this Jeep with brake fluid. And uh, yeah, here we go. Test drive time. <laughs> yeah all right guys first off this brake pedal feels great it engages right at the top of the pedal it is nice and firm so that brake lead was excellent that did the trick um, second of all I'm not gonna do the complete brake in process these door last brakes they're not the performance brakes like the power stop brakes in the front so it doesn't need to be properly bedded so we're gonna skip that whole brake in procedure uh, I'm still gonna drive around nice and easily and and just work these brake pads in you know why not I'm used to doing that but it, it doesn't require that type of brake in process so um, so far so good just gonna drive around and um, I don't know guys maybe I'll report back to you in a couple weeks I won't close this one out just yet I won't jump the gun on that if any problems arise you will hear about it immediately but until then doing great so um, I'll catch you guys in a couple weeks all right see you soon all right, guys, here we are about two weeks later. Let's take a look at our front brakes. Now, these have been on for about a month or so. These are just doing great. Uh, we got a lot of brake dust there, though, but <laughs> it's all good. These are the ceramic power stop brakes, the uh, performance brakes that were properly worn in. And here we go. These are the Duralast brakes from AutoZone. Uh, a little bit less brake dust, but that's the rear brakes. They don't break as hard as the fronts. But you can see that we have the uh, the Doralast AutoZone rotors, and they are rusting. Now, they've only been on about two weeks or so, but that's what happens when you're not performance <laughs> and coated. They're just regular steel, and they're rusting. So far, the calipers are looking really good, though. Um, no rust at all. No rust at all in the calipers whatsoever so they are looking good um so far everything stops just as it should nice and great we got good zj brakes no rubbing all good stuff here finally thank god all right guys that's gonna do it for my zj brake series hopefully we won't have to touch the brakes on this vehicle for a very long time we got the power stop brakes in the front they're doing awesome we got the AutoZone Duralast brakes in the rear they're doing just fine we also have the power stop brake pads for the emergency brake back here no problems there e-brake works just great and yeah i'm really digging the door last calipers we have the lifetime warranty on them and i love the fact that i don't have to rebuild the calipers you just walk in get a caliper nice and rebuilt it's so much easier so i think i'll just do that from now on but yeah everything's working just fine hopefully we won't have to touch these again and uh that's gonna do it guys so thank you for watching remember to like subscribe and i will see you guys on the next project Peace.